It's the 1950s. The world is recovering from a terrible war. Amazing materials had been developed in that war, and now the factories to make those materials need new products to keep them going. It's the age of plastic. It's the onset of a miracle, and plastics are the hero. Like here in this incredible product that is entering into homes all over the world, Tupperware. Because after all, we know, happy wife, happy life, right? Let's fast forward a few years. In the 1980s, first scientific reports are showing up that plastics are accumulating in the global oceans, and actually also being mistaken as food by seabirds and marine mammals. And those plastics, they do damage to these animals because they don't digest them. They stay in the stomachs, they obstruct the stomachs, the birds are dying. At the same time, Anna Soto, a professor at Tufts University in Boston, is studying breast cancer cells and how these cells divide when they're stimulated by estrogen. One day, she comes to her lab, and she sees that her cells are growing, they're dividing, even though she hadn't put any estrogen in there. And so she thinks, what's going on? After a big, big, winding, long story, she figures out one of her suppliers of plastic labware has changed the formulation of the product, and these polystyrene tubes are leaching a chemical that is estrogenic. In fact, it's actually not a chemical that the manufacturer put into those test tubes, it's a degradation product of an additive they put in there. It's what we call a non-intentionally added substance. A couple of other labs in the subsequent years are reporting screwed up lab experiments because of chemicals leaching from their plastic labware, bisphenol A, for example, from polycarbonate bottles, bisphenol A from mouse cages, I myself had problems with bisphenol A in our fish tanks, and so on. Quite a few reports coming out. Fast forward again. The 2000 years, people are starting to think, wait a minute, we've got these chemicals that are biologically active that can cause breast cancer cells to grow, leaching from plastic. But at the same time, we're putting plastic into food packaging. We, we're packaging our food in plastic. What is the consequence of those chemicals and plastic leaching into food? And we've got some researchers like Delilah Littner from Gothenburg University studying the overall leachate from the plastic uh, for Daphnia. These are these tiny aquatic water fleas, very, very small. And she finds acute effects. These Daphnia are impacted if you expose them to these leaching chemicals from plastic. Another group in Frankfurt, led by Professor Jörg Ullmann, together with Martin Wagner, they took tiny little aquatic snails, you can see them here, New Zealand mud snails, and they put them into plastic bottles. And these snails, they respond to estrogens. They make more embryos if you give them an estrogen trigger. Now, the snails that were living in plastic bottles, they also started making more embryos. And that lead the researchers to think maybe there's some estrogen that's leaching from the plastic bottles, but they didn't know exactly what it was. And in the meantime, we've got many reports of several known plastic chemicals that can cause all kinds of effects in rodents, for example. Like here, you see obesity. So estrogenic chemicals, endocrine-disrupting chemicals, can have these effects. We know that from many lab studies now. One of the chemicals that we've heard a lot about already is this one here. Does anyone know what it is? Not the scientists, anyone else? Okay, you're not that nerdy yet. Okay, this is bisphenol A. And that's one that people are getting rid of, right? I walked into a shop yesterday at Amsterdam Main Station, and there was a plastic bottle there saying proudly on the label, 100% sustainable, BPA-free. Both of those claims actually mean fairly little, to be honest. Because plastics, 
as our own work at the Food Packaging Forum has shown, contain many, many, many known hazardous chemicals. And these are the kind of functions that they can have. So they can be monomers like bisphenol A, they can be additives, they can be UV filters, they can be surfactants, and so on and so on. We actually came up with a list of 63 known hazardous chemicals for human health used in plastic packaging right now. So we started communicating that, and it's great that a lot of attention has been given to this topic yet, and even some big companies, some big brands, have been starting to produce blacklists that they give to their suppliers of packaging, and they have these chemicals on there that we have been highlighting, and they say to their suppliers, look, we'll buy your packaging only if you don't have those chemicals in there, which I think is a great thing, it's a good start. But more has to be done, because when you take plastic, when you take a plastic packaging item, you don't know if you've got any hazardous chemicals in there or not, right? It may be in there or it may not be. And so scientists have started to extract chemicals from plastics. This is a study that just came out this month, actually, from the Norwegian Technical University in collaboration with uh, Goethe University in Frankfurt. They extracted the chemicals that could potentially leach out of plastic, and they put them into chemical analysis to try and identify what are the ingredients in those plastics and at what levels are those chemicals present. And this is a, a slide shot that I got from Professor Martin Wagner at the Norwegian Technical University in Trondheim. This is what it looks like when you analyze that plastic extract. And we call it the forest of peaks. Each and every single one of those peaks that you can see there is a unique chemical substance. So in your extract of one plastic bottle, you've got hundreds, if not thousands, of different chemicals. And now the important thing is, what are they, right? So you can take this, this analysis, you can match it to different uh, libraries, we call them, uh, spectral libraries, and that can give you a hint on what the chemical could be. But for many, 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 I'd say about 80, maybe even 90 percent of those chemicals, you don't know what they are. You don't know what the chemical is. And this is what we call the non-intentionally added substances. Why are they there? They're breakdown products of the complex manufacture of plastics. So when you make plastics, it's almost like a magic cauldron reaction. You've got your monomer that goes in there, you've got uh, catalysts and so on, you're reacting them to make the big polymers, then you put in some additives. But your monomer and your additives, they're not pure, pure chemicals, right? They come with certain impurities already. Those impurities will also be reacting. They'll also be in your finished plastic. Then you have, like in Anna Soto's lab, additives that do their function and break down in the purpose of doing what they're supposed to do, turning into nonalphenol, for example. And then you've got uh, other kinds of reaction byproducts. So these are what we call the non-intentionally added substances. And they're actually, they make up most of the stuff that leaches out of plastic. The thing about them is that if we don't know what they are, we don't know what their effects are on health, and we also don't know what their levels are, because you need to know what a substance is in order to determine both of those. So what are the questions that we are working on right now? What do we want to know? Well, first of all, we want to know what are the chemicals that humans are actually exposed to from plastic food packaging. And we're doing a big research project at the Food Packaging Forum together with our partners to study um, what's been measured, what's been detected in terms of migration. And the other big question, of course, is what are the health effects of, of these chronic daily chemical exposures at low levels? What do they do to human health? So, in conclusion, we know that there are hazardous chemicals in plastic, right? We know that today as we're speaking. That's something we can, we can probably quite easily take action on. We also know that there are these known unknowns, these non-intentionally added substances, and that's also something that we, we really urgently need to tackle. But I know that I actually find it quite unacceptable that for 40 years, our governments, our regulators, have been allowing food packaging on the shelves 
that contain unknown, untested chemicals. That, to me, is really the elephant in the room. I mean, that is actually pretty unacceptable, I think. Here we are trusting our governments to do the right thing, and they just don't know what's going on. And so I think that's really that's something that we need to make much more noise about, and we need to support our governments to do the right thing. And with that, I would like to thank you very much. <laughs>